Hey everybody, uh, Dr. L here, and in this segment we're going to go through just a little bit of uh, introductory work in Tableau, uh, which is a wonderful tool for uh, generating visualizations and overall exploratory analysis. Uh, first thing we have to do is get the data into uh, Tableau here, and there's a couple options for us. Uh, you have some sort of a CSV file, you know, which is not on the list. Uh, you're going to go ahead and click more here and go and find that file. Um, for our purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and pull just a Microsoft Excel file, uh, which contains the relevant sales data set. So I'm going to click that tab there to import an Excel file. I'm going to go ahead and then click on the uh, file that I want to import here, which is the sales data. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And you'll notice up top in the top right corner of the screen here, it gives me two options. I'm connecting to either the live data set or I can extract it. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit extract here. That way, if I wanna open it up again uh, without maybe changing anything in that data set, I will be able to still access that raw data set uh, without clogging the connection. Uh, there may be situations where you wanna connect directly to the live data set, that's fine. For most cases, at least for the project, it will probably not make a difference. Um, and the other thing I want to direct your attention to is anytime I would like to go back and view generally this, this type of spreadsheet summary format of the data, uh, we'll be able to do that by clicking on this data source tab here. You'll we'll always be able to get there by clicking on that data source tab. For now though, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move to our first worksheet and generate a couple of visualizations. So the worksheets, uh, are gonna be the way we're gonna kind of save our work rather than just using one worksheet and going back and forth and adding stuff to it. We'll work on one, when we like what we got, we'll start another one. Uh, so let's go ahead and start our first worksheet here. Actually, before we do that, let's just take a look at the variables uh, in the data set. So we have a couple different variables here. Um, the uh, five numerical variables that we're dealing with, we've got a promo variable, uh, which is actually binary, zero or one, that tells us whether or not we ran a website-wide promotion on a given day. Uh, we have the quantity of units sold on a corresponding day. We have the price that was charged for those units on a given day, so some variable pricing. Uh, we have the ad spend variable here, which measures how much directed uh, or targeted ad spending was associated with those particular sales on a given day. And last but not least, we have the social media impressions, things like likes or comments on a Facebook page. Uh, we also have a few variables here that are qualitative, uh, namely the date, day, and month variable. These are qualitative variables, uh, and we will see how they show up momentarily. Uh, let's go ahead and click on sheet one. It may give you the option to extract and save it. I'm not going to do that for now, so I'm going to cancel. Um, but here it is. We have a blank worksheet. A uh, few pieces of information to talk about regarding the structure of this, uh, this frame. Uh, we have our numerical variables down here, and you can tell they're numerical because they have a number sign, a pound sign next to them. Uh, but we also have our categorical variables, here rather, our qualitative variables up top, month, day, and date. And they are used for slightly different things. Okay, they're used for slightly different things. Now, let's start off by doing a little bit of numerical analysis. Take a look at the sales variable. Okay, and let's think about analyzing the distribution of sales. All right, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and click and drag the sales variable over here, and you can put it either in the rows or the columns. You'll note if you drop it in the rows, okay, then it is essentially measuring the sales along the y-axis. Okay, and right now, uh, it's measuring the total sales. You can see here it says the sum of the sales specifically, okay, meaning it's added up the entire column of data for sales in the data set. And it's giving us one metric, one number, and that is this 18,553,177 units were sold through the entire data set. The entire data set 
is through one entire year, I believe in 2018, of operations. Um, if we had moved sales instead of into rows, if we put it in columns, then we would see the same information but displayed horizontally. Right? Same information but displayed horizontally. So depending on your preference, what you want on the y-axis versus what you want on the x-axis, you can put it in one place or the other. Now, the other really nice tool to be able to exploit here in Tableau is this Show Me uh, tab. And what that Show Me tab will reveal if you click it, it will reveal all the different types of plots that you could generate with the current structure of data that you have pulled into the rows and columns. And hopefully one structure that looks pretty familiar for us is this guy, right? What does that look like? Well, hopefully you're like, hey, that's the histogram picture. And you would be absolutely right. And you'll notice when I hover over it, it gives me a little bit of insight into what that picture is just below in this show me panel. It says for a histogram view, try one measure. Okay, so it says if you have one measure up there in the rows or columns, what it does is it creates a bin field. And this is not necessarily available for all measures, it tells us. So let's go ahead and click that button. And you'll see when we do, boom, we generate a beautiful histogram picture for the sales variable. Okay, and you'll note once we've done that, it includes here, it kind of changed what we had up in the rows and columns because we had Tableau essentially automate that for us, tell us how to take that sales data and organize it to generate this diagram. So now I can see here how they did that. Um, you'll also notice in the right show me panel, there are some other pictures that are available for us to make. It looks like we've got a box and whiskers plot here. We can click that. Okay, not exactly what we wanted, right? But there are some ways that we can improve this, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Now, anytime if you think you move too far forward and you want to get backwards, okay, we can go ahead and hit this little back arrow in the top right that will undo what we had just done, and we'll go back to our previous diagram here. So I'll show you that box and whiskers plot in a moment. Uh, now, before we do that, Let's think about uh, what we can see here about sales. Okay, notice that this looks like a pretty normally distributed um, picture. It looks like a nice symmetric bell-shaped curve. Okay, so we can say a little bit about the distribution here. Um, You'll notice if I hover the mouse over any one of those bins, any one of those blocks, it tells me specifically the number of observations that fall into each bin and what the bin range is. Okay, but the other thing we might be interested in is how sales uh, is maybe related to a, another variable. Okay, for example, if we were to pull the promo variable over here, let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull that promo variable over, which tells us whether or not we ran a website-wide promotion. And let's go ahead and drop it right over this color panel here. You guys see that color panel under marks? What that will do is depending on if we drop it on color, size, label, detail, et cetera, what that will do is it will allow us to kind of control how the plot colors or designs features around these different variables. So let's go ahead and drop the promo variable into the color plot here and look at how it changes the histogram picture. Okay, what we should be able to see here now is that the histogram becomes shaded. You'll notice there are some bars that are very light, and if we hover over those bars, we can see those are bars where we had a promo with value zero. It did not run a promo on those days. In fact, the count of promo is zero on those days. There aren't any. However, if we move over into a slightly darker blue bin, you'll notice all of a sudden now we have one promo on all of those days. Okay, back to zero, this darker one, we ran four promotions okay, on all those days where we had sold in that $49,000 bin. So it kind of looks like here on days where we ran promotions, it looks like they generally are associated with higher sales days than days where we did not run promotions, which are kind of on the left tail of the distribution of the sales variable. Uh, you'll also note that when we pulled the promo variable in there and we colored the plot by it, right? What do we do? Well, we took promo, we clicked and dragged it and we dropped it right on that color button. It gave us 
these bins now color. Uh, but the other thing that happened is it made some more options available for different types of charts we can make. So let's go ahead and take a look at incorporating multiple histograms in the same chart. And now I can see specifically how the sales data falls relative to the promotions. Okay, these high valued observations here in the 72 and 70 bin, those were associated with one promotion. Okay, but over here we have five promotions associated with the 59K bin. So our hypothesis, I think originally, was that it looked like promotions were associated more with higher sales days than lower sales days. And you can sort of see that uh, in that in this picture that we're looking at, there is not a lot going on in the lower tail. There's not a lot of promotions being run, none really down in that lower tail associated with lower sales values. Okay, so this is us getting a good idea of the distribution of a variable and potentially how it's related to another variable. So let's go ahead and clear this up and create a new sheet to do some slightly different analysis here. So if I click this little, looks like a little plus sign next to sheet one here, what that will do is let us start over from scratch and create sheet two now. And if I go back to sheet one, sheet one is where we had left it. If I wanna undo what we had done in sheet one, I can use the back arrow or I can use the forward arrow for sheet one. Okay, if I go forward too far, it brings me over to sheet two. Uh, now, what happens if I want to take all the work I did and get it out of Tableau and import it into my report? Well, uh, first off, if you wanted to customize things, okay, you can click and drag this a little bit here. Um, but the nice part about this is if you right click that sheet, okay, you can immediately copy and you can actually copy the entire image to export out. Okay. Uh, note the show me tab, it does cover up the legend associated with this diagram here. So our legend is up in the top right. Okay, so that show me tab does cover that up. So if you do wind up coloring the plot or something, you wanna see the legend, you gotta move that show me tab, you gotta click it away. Uh, but not a problem for us. So we can right click, we can, um, you know, we can export the image. We can actually export the data associated with this image as well. Okay, that is definitely feasible here. In fact, if you wanted to view the data associated with the image, you can. Okay, there is that data, boom, boom. Okay. And let's go ahead now and jump to our sheet two and think about uh, maybe describing sales variable a little bit differently. And we looked at how sales was distributed. We saw we had a nice bell-shaped curve, or at least what looked like a symmetric bell-shaped curve. Let's look at plotting sales over time. Uh, and this may or may not be possible depending on the structure of your data. But if you have time series data like we do here, okay, I'm gonna put sales on the vertical axis and I'm gonna put the date on the horizontal axis. And right now, this isn't too informative. Okay, we only have one year of data in the data set, 2018, and this is one data point where we've added up all of the sales for that one year. And we may not want that. Let's say, I suppose instead we wanted not the sum of sales, but we wanted the average sale for the year. Okay, then we can go click that a little down arrow next to the name of that measure variable, okay? Then I go down to the measure. It says right now we're calculating the sum, but let's go ahead and switch that to the average. Okay, so here's our average. Now what this is telling us is on an average day in 2018, we're selling about 50,000 units, 50,831. Okay, but we may want this broken down, not just by year. We only have one year in this data set. So if I hit this little plus sign, hit that little plus sign to the left of year, what that will do is it will allow me to expand the horizontal axis, right, along what I'm measuring in the columns. And I can open that up and I can now measure the average sales by quarter. So I can see there's Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And we can see the average sales does fluctuate a little bit by quarter. 
Uh, you'll notice we can drill down even further in terms of that time dimension. Okay, we can drill this down into um, months. There is our monthly data, right, along the x-axis here. Now we're measuring months. Notice along the vertical, uh, sorry, at the top, along the columns, we still have it broken down by quarter, but we've got it broken down even more finely by month here. And if we wanted to look at it even finer, if we wanted to go all the way down to the daily frequency, we can hit this little, again, plus sign next to month, and we can actually generate the entire time series data. Okay, so this is that line graph, or along the horizontal axis, we're measuring things across time, right, day of the month, throughout the entire year of 2018. So we can see here the days along the horizontal axis in the bottom, and across the horizontal axis at the top of the diagram, note we're getting the month and the quarter associated. Okay, so that is there. Um, so we're able to generate this nice time series picture here. Okay, and this gives us an idea of how things are trending. Now let's suppose I wanted to understand a confidence interval um, of the time series trend. And so in order to do that, what we'll be able to do is invoke the analytics tab. And the analytics tab is right here. So let's go ahead and click that. And you'll notice under the model options, it gives us a few options here for model. One of them is the average with the 95% confidence interval. So let's go ahead and grab that over here. And we're going to put that in our table and notice it, installed the 95% confidence interval for us. It says the average is 50,831. And if I move my mouse cursor towards the lower bound of that grade region, okay, then it tells me the bottom value, the lower bound of that 95 confidence interval is down at 50,083. The upper bound of the 95% confidence interval is up here at 51,578. So there is a confidence interval. If you have to add a confidence interval, boom, you can add that. Okay, so this is a time series diagram with a little bit of uh, statistical analysis overlaid. We overlaid that average bar with the confidence interval. And you'll notice there's some other things we can do. There's some forecast options here, some clustering, uh, trend line we'll uh, use in a moment. I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, but there are some other things you can do as well. Uh, you can summarize things with median and quartiles. Uh, in fact, we can uh, create a box and whiskers plot. Let me show you how to do that next. And then we will come back to looking at the relationship between two variables and actually building a trend line model with a linear regression line and interpreting those results. So let's clean this up a little bit here uh, and go ahead and generate a new tab. Uh, or maybe we want to look at a different perspective on the distribution of a variable. So let's suppose we wanted to understand, uh, let's say how the price variable is distributed. Uh, and let's suppose we wanted to understand how the price variable changes across different days. Okay, so here we have the price variable. Um, again, you'll notice it's summed, which is not really what we want. We don't want the price variable added up across every Sunday in the data set saying that we got a price of 770 in total across every single one of those 52 Sundays in the year. Uh, so what we're going to do here, right, we saw before that we could change which measure we were looking at, maybe we wanted the average. But again, I'm gonna argue that's not really want what we want. We actually want the disaggregated data for each one of those days. So I'm gonna click the analysis tab. You see the aggregate measures is checked. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that. And now what it's showing me here is all the different prices on a given Sunday. And it looks like here the prices seem to max out at around 20 and they don't go any lower than $10. In fact, you cannot find any observation in the data set uh, where the price is actually lower than $10. Um, if you wanted to look at a box and whisker plot here, we can do that pretty easily again by using the suggestion in the show me tab and clicking on that box and whisker plot. What that will do here is it will show us a slightly different way of looking at the distribution. So this information is essentially what the histogram gives us, but now we have essentially a histogram that we're looking down on for every single day of the week. 
And you'll notice if I move into the gray area, it tells me uh, what the value of the upper whisker, the upper hinge, the median, the lower hinge, and the lower whisker are. So these things here, um, you know, again, are providing us information on the, uh, uh, you know, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and anything that's outside of the upper whisker here would typically be classified as an outlier. Um, so here is a box and whisker plot for a particular variable. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up the segment today by showing you how to plot relationships between variables if you wanted to generate a scatter plot. So let me go ahead and clean up my notations here and let's generate one last sheet uh, to look at the relationship between two variables. So suppose we were interested in the relationship between sales, which we'll put on the y-axis, and the amount of targeted ad spending. We probably would expect those things to be positively related to each other, right? The more we target folks to spend on our goods, the more we should be selling, provided the ad spending has a positive effect. And you'll notice right when we do this, it looks like Tableau is trying to make the right scatter plot here. We got sales on the vertical axis, we got ad spending on the horizontal axis. So sales is the Y variable, ad spend is the X variable. Uh, if I had flipped which variable was in the rows or the columns, if I had changed those, if I had flipped these around here, okay, then I would be switching which variable is measured on which axis. And the odd thing right now is it looks like we only have one data point here. And if we hover our mouse over that data point, you'll notice, oh, what's happening? Well, that 18 million figure, we saw that was the sum of the sales. So we have to be a little careful here. The reason why we're only getting one data point in this picture is because that one data point is added up, it's aggregated all the sales, and it's also aggregated all of the ad spending. So in order to generate the correct scatter plot here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that analysis tab like we had done before, and we're gonna disaggregate the measures. And when I do that, boom, I get a very beautiful scatter plot here that sure looks like uh, a positive relationship between ad spend and sales. Now we want to be able to test that, right? Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to build a linear regression model. Now Tableau is not great for predictive analytics. I would say primarily it is an exploratory, uh, you know, great exploratory tool for visualization and descriptive analytics. Uh, but it can do a little bit of predictive analytics. And in order to do that, again, we're going to utilize the analytics tab over here. That was the tab we had gone to to put in uh, things like confidence intervals. We wanted to put in a confidence interval. We could. Okay, we can tell it to do it for one variable or we can do it for both for the entire pane. So here is the confidence interval for the sales variable. That is the horizontal gray bar. And this vertical gray bar shows us the confidence interval for the ad spend variable. The upper bound is 2066, the mean is 2037, the lower bound is 2008. And if I wanted to, again, undo that, I could just hit that little back arrow to take those away. I could do it manually. I could grab it, drag that back over to the left. Okay, I could put that reference line away and then I could drag this one separately back over to the left. I could put that away. Okay. And uh, again, they're giving us some more options for scatter plots here. Uh, for example, maybe I want to understand, um, you know, we saw earlier that promotion was an important variable, at least in terms of sales. So if I was curious, uh, you know, how is promotions associated with sales and ad spending? We can think about doing things like coloring the diagram by the promotion variable where I can see here, it looks like the darker values are close to one. Those are all associated with days of higher sales, but also more ad spending, okay? And all these observations that are kind of grayed out in lighter blue, those are days where the promotion was not run, promo equals zero. Okay, we might also wanna think about, well, what about, uh, you know, days of the week? Do we tend to have more sales on Mondays or Saturdays or Fridays? Okay, how does ad spending relate? We could click day. We could have colored it by day if we wanted to, but you'll notice we already colored it by promo. So let's control the size of the data points by the day variable. Okay, now you can see the biggest circle here on the right 
is Saturdays, Saturday, Saturday. There's a Friday slightly smaller circle. There's a big circles for Saturday. Then there's another Saturday. Okay, so it looks like there are some Saturdays where we have high values of sales, but there are also some Saturdays where there are low values of sales. So maybe not super clear uh, in this perspective how the day of the week necessarily affects um, the level of sales or the level of ad spend. Uh, so maybe not the best diagram here, but we could think about maybe putting a bar diagram together, for example, where we have the different days of the week. Okay, and we did this earlier with the price variable. We, we could do it with the sales variable to ask on which day are we generating the largest sales on average. Um, now, if we do not want anything colored here, all I have to do is take the day variable, drag it back to the left, take the promo variable, drag it back to the left, and we are more or less back to square one. Uh, but the other thing I'd like to do is I would like to test this idea that there was a linear relationship between ad spend and sales that looked positive. So in order to test this, let's go ahead and use the trend line tool. And what the trend line tool does right here is it essentially allows us to implement a univariate linear regression model in Tableau. Okay, so we're gonna grab that, drag it over, and you'll notice it gives me a couple options here, linear, logarithmic, exponential, polynomial, power. Okay, we're going to use a linear trend line that is a linear regression function, which when you let go, will draw the linear regression line through the data. This is the line that fits the data the best. That is uh, minimizing the sum of square residuals through that ordinary least squares OLS process. And you'll notice now when I hover over that regression line, it gives me the equation for it. It tells me sales is equal to 18.8481 times the ad spend variable plus the intercept term of 12,431.1. It also reports for me right away the R squared. I can see that this particular model, when we're trying to predict sales from the ad spend variable, explains about 54% of the variation in sales across our observations in that year of 2018. I also see the p-value for the F-test reported here. Uh, for the joint significance test is extremely small, very close to zero. And that tells me we have a significant model. Now, if you right click that trend line okay, and you ask to describe the trend line, okay, then it gives you a little bit more detail here, right? It's showing me specifically now by term, here is the ad spend variable. So this is our beta one, right? That is the beta on ad spend. Here is the intercept term. This is the beta zero value. And we can see here the standard errors of those slopes are reported as well, or of those parameters. And the T statistics for each one are also reported here. There's the T stat for ad spend, the T stat for the intercept term, and note individually, both of these things are individually significant. So those are the P values associated with those individual T tests. If you want a more comprehensive look at the summary from the trend line model, uh, again, we can right click and say describe the entire model itself. We clicked on describe trend line before, but if we look at the entire model output, we get a lot more information here. Right? Note it's telling us the amount of residual degrees of freedom we have. Uh, so quite a bit of uh, statistical output to look at here. It's giving us the model formula. We have ad spend as one variable and an intercept term. Uh, it's telling us the sum of the squared errors from the regression as well as the mean squared error from the regression. The R squared value is there. Standard error of the regression is there. Uh, the P value for joint significance is there. And note it gives us the conclusion here, the model may be significant at a p-value lower than 5%. Um, so that allows us to, again, conduct our hypothesis testing right away, right? We see that not only is the entire model jointly significant, but each individual variable, ad spend is significant individually, and the intercept term is significant individually with a extremely, extremely, extremely small p-value p-value is very, very, very close to zero. Definitely smaller than 5%. Um, so hopefully that gives you some starting point here for getting through those tasks. Okay, um, we've uh, drawn here at least four unique visualizations. Uh, we started with the histogram plot. 
in sheet one. We had a time series plot in sheet two. We had a box and whiskers plot in sheet three here. We had a scatter plot where we added a linear regression line and looked at that regression output in sheet four. So hope that is useful for you. That concludes this segment. Hope you're all doing well. Stay tuned.